Good morning. Nice to have you back. I'm going to do a hard one today. This one is about depression and the connection to childhood sexual abuse. I have not been depressed for about 30 years. My depression was mainly the first 40 years of my life. And uh, I want to go back and look at that and tell you how I felt and what I did and how it was removed. Because I know depression is such a common problem for people nowadays. And it can be completely removed. Don't ever think that you're gonna have it forever. And so this uh, time it's gonna be a little different. I'm going to read, I wrote down everything I could think about depression to make it easier for me instead of just off the top of my head because I really don't like going back there. I like to just kind of leave it in the past. But for you, I will talk about anything. So here we go. Who would have thought that unremembered abuse as a child orchestrated within the walls of my very own home would cause me such debilitating depression, along with immense pain, injury, destruction, and impairment. My life between birth and age 40 was a mystery, no memories of anything tragic happening, and at the same time I knew without a doubt I was very different from the others around me. When we lose our memories and forget trauma, Doctors call it repression or dissociative amnesia. I call it a precious gift from God. He knew how much I could handle as a child. He also knew the perfect timing to give me a handful of memories so that together we could solve my depression mystery. In my home, I suffered from physical abuse, sexual abuse, incest, and psychological or emotional abuse. I was surprised when I heard that one out of three girls and one out of five boys, by the time they are 18 years old, experience abuse. I was one of them, and there's so many others out there. When we are unable to stop the abuse and or the abuser, we can feel helpless and sometimes slip into depression. When depression is present, we sometimes numb ourselves and attempt to shut down our emotions. The depression encased, encased me for over 40 years, and I had no idea why. The depression was way beyond sadness. I felt like I was drowning in a sea of darkness, alone, trapped and terrified. Dead eyes stared back at me in the mirror and I wondered why I existed. Every day was the same, no joy, a foggy brain, and numbness. As a kid, I didn't know that my home was different from anybody else's. All my nighttime tummy tickles that turned into inappropriate touch, which produced tears, followed by super fun horsey back rides to bed. It was all part of my bedtime ritual. All little girls do that, I thought. Pictures of me as a tiny baby revealed some smiles, but once the age of two came along, my countenance shifted in a negative way. Photos showed me that my sweet smile had disappeared. My blue-green eyes were cast downward. Dark circles clearly showed on my porcelain skin and tear stains were noticeable on my cheeks. My dad fancied himself an amateur photographer who shot hundreds of pictures of me, his only baby girl. Through his photo handiwork, I was able to see myself deteriorate just by looking at my family photos. Within the family photo albums, each picture was carefully mounted with month date, and year to chronicle our life together as a family of three. 
hundreds of pictures showcased my tragic life. And those specific photos replaced my lost and forgotten traumatic memories. It was odd for me because I would clearly see myself in the different photos, but I had no recollection of the events ever taking place. The best way for me to describe the years of paralyzing depression, depression would be to say that I felt as if I had experienced a great loss or death within inside myself. Yes, I could move, walk, and talk, but the special essence that God puts into every child had been tampered with and destroyed within me. Due to all the different kinds of abuses I dealt with, I was in a state of continual shock and grief, which led me to experience PTSD. My body felt dead inside, and I didn't know how to formulate the words that could come close to how I felt. I lacked joy in every aspect of my life and had zero self-confidence. Shame draped itself over my entire body, leaving me feeling hopeless, helpless, alone, and always afraid. Any task required of me was a painful ordeal. The simplest act of dressing and bathing were challenging and took energy that I always lacked. Exhaustion plagued me and sleep never refreshed me. The depression didn't come and go. It clung tightly onto my core. Life itself was something to race through as quickly as possible, holding my breath. My safest place to hide from the world as a child and later as an adult was when I was buried deep down under the covers of my bed. Lying in bed meant that I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to do anything and I didn't have to be with other people. Bedtime was basically a ritual for me in which I disappeared from the big scary world, creating a safe dark zone for me and only me. I waited in the darkness as a butterfly waits in her cocoon, hoping to soon be set free. Even though the full-size bed was my safety zone, nightmares hounded me when darkness fell, and I attempted to drift off to sleep. The results of my dreams were always the same, in which I saw pictures of myself being chased and bullied by any number of people, monsters, or animals. These night terrors always ended up the same way. I died and was oftentimes eaten. Those nightmares lasted for close to 40 years, and I didn't know why I felt so persecuted. Personally, I felt like an outcast who was set apart from the rest of the world. Without a doubt, I knew I was very different from all the others. I was flawed, broken, and didn't belong in this magnificent world with all the joyful people. Animals were my one and only chosen friends. I trusted and loved them unconditionally. Rescuing lost and hurting animals became my everyday passion. Their thankful eyes filled me with love and gave me everything I needed in the moment. If you would have asked me as a child, teenager, or adult, if I had ever been sexually abused, my answer would have been no, absolutely not. From the beginning of seventh grade to my late thirties, I searched tirelessly for an explanation as to why I personally suffered from debilitating chronic depression, suicidal thoughts, and countless other maladies. God, in his mercy, erased the awful incest memories as soon as I experienced them in my home in order to save me. He always was and is by my side. I'm certain Jesus was with me throughout the trauma. He cried when I cried. I just know he did. God gives all people the choice to do good or evil, and if they go down the evil route, there will be consequences. It's a shame that innocent people have to suffer due to the poor choices that others make. Unfortunately, I was placed in that particular home and given parents 
who were both extremely sick. Mom was the youngest of five and suffered from the mental illness known as paranoid schizophrenia. She was delusional and psychotic. With God's help, I was able to completely forgive her. Dad was a pedophile, which means he was sexually attracted to children. He caused tremendous harm to me, but with God's grace throughout the years, I was also able to forgive him. It was much harder forgiving dad than mom. But God, I got a bug that's bugging me, but God was with me through it all. Even though I didn't know him, he never let me give up. He whispered words of truth and encouragement to keep me going. And I, at the time, thought it was my own intuition, but I was wrong. It was him. He loved me from the moment I was conceived, and he loves me today, just as he loves you. I was his little girl. Therefore, he shielded me from the memories of the first 10 years of my life until the timing was perfect for me to recall the trauma and heal from all the devastating after effects. Forgiveness was a gift I gave to myself. It took me so many years and with the help of wonderful counselors, pastors, and of course God, I forgave mom and dad. Regarding dad, it's kind of like peeling an onion. When new memories or thoughts arise, I forgive him again and again and again. Allowing my inner rage to be released by forgiveness has been an amazing blessing for me in my life. Please never become discouraged. Perhaps you are in a season of mourning as I was for so very, very long. Just know that God can do for you as he did for me. And that is to show you exactly what needs to be done in order to bring relief and healing to your mind, body, soul, and spirit. Your past may have been completely different from mine, but the lessons I learned will definitely help you today. More importantly, I am sharing with you that no matter how difficult your life has been or how much pain you are currently struggling in, there absolutely is an opportunity for healing and your very own miracle. In my 40s, when I asked God into my life, the depression was replaced with glorious happiness, joy, forgiveness, and everlasting peace. This healing didn't happen overnight, but the changes in me were incredible, and I am forever grateful and thankful that my life has been totally renewed and transformed. As soon as I learned that I needed to turn my face towards God and focus completely on Him, my answers came in rapid succession. Well, that's a tiny bit of my story. My whole story is written in my books and they're on Amazon and Audible. If you want to know um, much deeper what happened. But what I want to say is in my 40s, at my lowest, when I was uh, about ready to give up, I cried out to God and um, I asked him to come in into my heart and save me because I just, I didn't want to go on anymore. And he did. And from that point on, I just immersed myself in him in anything about him as far as to find a church where miracles were happening so that I could be in the anointing. You can feel God's presence. It's the electricity in the air. You know a church that um, where people are being healed. I would continuously search for that environment. That environment can also be in your home, if you're calling out to God, if you're praying, if you're in the Word, reading the Bible, if you have Christian music on that's playing. I was doing everything that I could fight the darkness and because I wanted only the light to be near me. 
and um, there's so much more in my in my books about all of this that I encourage you to um, to pick one up or uh, on Amazon I'm in the library so you can pay like ten dollars a month and and read all my books it's very inexpensive that way and but just know that you totally can be set free. It's not a lifetime sentence for you at all. And um, I hope I can give you hope and encouragement and I send out love and peace and I'll be praying for each and every one that watches this video. But um, take care. I hope that you will like and subscribe and push the notification button and uh, just know I love you. Jesus name. Amen. Bye-bye.